Today's reading begins in Exodus chapter 23, starting in verse 14. You shall observe a feast to me three times a year. You shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, as I commanded you, at the time appointed in the month Abib, for in it you came out of Egypt, and no one shall appear before me empty. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of your labors, which you sow in the field, and the feast of ingathering at the end of the year, when you gather in your labors out of the field. Three times in the year all your males shall appear before the Lord God. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread. The fat of my feast shall not remain all night until the morning. You shall bring the first of the first fruits of your ground into the house of the Lord your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. Behold, I send an angel before you, to keep you by the way, and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Pay attention to him, and listen to his voice. Don't provoke him, for he will not pardon your disobedience, for my name is in him. But if you indeed listen to his voice, and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies, and an adversary to your adversaries. For my angel shall go before you, and bring you in to the Amorite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Canaanite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, and I will cut them off. You shall not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor follow their practices, but you shall utterly overthrow them and demolish their pillars. You shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from amongst you. No one will miscarry or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. I will send my terror before you, and will confuse all the people to whom you come, and I will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. I will send the hornet before you, which will drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite from before you. I will not drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land become desolate, and the animals of the field multiply against you. Little by little I will drive them out from before you, until you have increased and inherit the land. I will set your border from the Red Sea even to the Sea of the Philistines, and from the wilderness to the river. For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and you shall drive them out before you. You shall make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. You shall not dwell in their land, lest they make you sin against me. For if you serve their gods, it will surely be a snare to you. He said to Moses, Come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of the people, and worship from a distance. Moses alone shall come near to the Lord, but they shall not come near. The people shall not go up with him. Moses came and told the people all the Lord's words, and all the ordinances. And all the people answered with one voice, and said, All the words which the Lord has spoken we will do. Moses wrote all the Lord's words, then rose up early in the morning, and built an altar at the base of the mountain, with twelve pillars for the twelve tribes of Israel. He sent young men of the children of Israel, who offered burnt offerings, and sacrificed peace offerings of cattle to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. He took the book of the covenant, and read it in the hearing of the people, and they said, We will do all that the Lord has said, and be obedient. Moses took the blood, and sprinkled it on the people, and said, Look, this is the blood of the covenant, which the Lord has made with you concerning all these words. Then Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel went up. They saw the God of Israel. Under his feet was like a paved work of sapphire stone, like the skies for clearness. He didn't lay his hand on the nobles of the children of Israel. They saw God, and ate and drank. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain, and stay here, and I will give you the stone tablets with the law and the commands that I have written, that you may teach them. Moses rose up with Joshua his servant, and Moses went up on to God's mountain. He said to the elders, Wait here for us, until we come again to you. Behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever is involved in a dispute can go to them. Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The Lord's glory settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. The seventh day he called to Moses out of the middle of the cloud. The appearance of the Lord's glory was like devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. 
Moses entered into the middle of the cloud and went up on the mountain, and Moses was on the mountain forty days and forty nights. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they take an offering for me. From every one whose heart makes him willing, you shall take my offering. This is the offering which you shall take from them, gold, silver, bronze, blue, purple, scarlet, fine linen, goat's hair, ram's skins dyed red, sea cow hides, acacia wood, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense, onyx stones, and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate. Let them make me a sanctuary, that I may dwell amongst them. According to all that I show you, the pattern of the tabernacle, and the pattern of all its furniture, even so you shall make it. They shall make an ark of acacia wood. Its length shall be two and a half cubits, its width a cubit and a half, and a cubit and a half its height. You shall overlay it with pure gold. You shall overlay it inside and outside, and you shall make a gold molding around it. You shall cast four rings of gold for it, and put them in its four feet. Two rings shall be on the one side of it, and two rings on the other side of it. You shall make poles of acacia wood, and overlay them with gold. You shall put the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark, to carry the ark. The poles shall be in the rings of the ark. They shall not be taken from it. You shall put the covenant which I shall give to you into the ark. You shall make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two and a half cubits shall be its length, and a cubit and a half its width. You shall make two cherubim of hammered gold. You shall make them at the two ends of the mercy seat. Make one cherub at the one end, and one cherub at the other end. You shall make the cherubim on its two ends of one piece with the mercy seat. The cherubim shall spread out their wings upward, covering the mercy seat with their wings, with their faces towards one another. The faces of the cherubim shall be towards the mercy seat. You shall put the mercy seat on top of the ark, and in the ark you shall put the covenant that I will give you. There I will meet with you, and I will tell you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim which are on the ark of the covenant, all that I command you for the children of Israel. You shall make a table of acacia wood. Its length shall be two cubits, its width a cubit, and its height one and a half cubits. You shall overlay it with pure gold, and make a gold molding around it. You shall make a rim of a hand width around it. You shall make a golden molding on its rim around it. You shall make four rings of gold for it, and put the rings in the four corners that are on its four feet. The rings shall be close to the rim, for places for the poles to carry the table. You shall make the poles of acacia wood, and overlay them with gold, that the table may be carried with them. You shall make its dishes, its spoons, its ladles, and its bowls, with which to pour out offerings. You shall make them of pure gold. You shall set bread of the presence on the table before me always. You shall make a lampstand of pure gold. The lampstand shall be made of hammered work. Its base, its shaft, its cups, its buds, and its flowers shall be of one piece with it. There shall be six branches going out of its sides, three branches of the lampstand out of its one side, and three branches of the lampstand out of its other side, three cups made like almond blossoms in one branch, a bud and a flower, and three cups made like almond blossoms in the other branch, a bud and a flower, so for the six branches going out of the lampstand, and in the lampstand four cups made like almond blossoms, its buds and its flowers, and a bud under two branches of one piece with it, and a bud under two branches of one piece with it, and a bud under two branches of one piece with it, for the six branches going out of the lampstand. Their buds and their branches shall be of one piece with it, all of it one beaten work of pure gold. You shall make its lamps seven, and they shall light its lamps to give light to the space in front of it. Its snuffers and its snuff dishes shall be of pure gold. It shall be made of a talent of pure gold, with all these accessories. See that you make them after their pattern, which has been shown to you on the mountain. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, beginning in verse 29. But immediately after the suffering of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. Then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. He will send out his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his chosen ones from the four winds, from one end of the sky to the other. Now from the fig tree learn this parable. When its branch has now become tender and produces its leaves, you know that the summer is near. 
Even so, you also, when you see all these things, know that he is near, even at the doors. Most certainly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things are accomplished. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But no one knows of that day and hour, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. As the days of Noah were, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in those days which were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ship, and they didn't know until the flood came and took them all away, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and one will be left. Watch therefore, for you don't know in what hour your Lord comes. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what watch of the night the thief was coming, he would have watched and would not have allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore also be ready, for in that hour that you don't expect, the Son of Man will come. Who then is the faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord has set over his household, to give them their food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord finds doing so when he comes. Most certainly I tell you that he will set him over all that he has. But if that evil servant should say in his heart, My Lord is delaying his coming, and begin to beat his fellow servants, and eat and drink with the drunkards, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he doesn't expect it, and in an hour when he doesn't know it, and will cut him in pieces, and appoint his portion with the hypocrites. That is where the weeping and grinding of teeth will be. Psalm 30, beginning in verse 1. I will extol you, Lord, for you have raised me up, and have not made my foes to rejoice over me. Lord my God, I cried to you, and you have healed me. Lord, you have brought up my soul from Sheol. You have kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his. Give thanks to his holy name, for his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but joy comes in the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. You, Lord, when you favored me, made my mountain stand strong. But when you hid your face, I was troubled. I cried to you, Lord. I made supplication to the Lord. What profit is there in my destruction if I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise you? Shall it declare your truth? Hear, Lord, and have mercy on me. Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing for me. You have removed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness, to the end that my heart may sing praise to you and not be silent. Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Proverbs chapter 7, beginning in verse 24. Now therefore, sons, listen to me. Pay attention to the words of my mouth. Don't let your heart turn to her ways. Don't go astray in her paths, for she has thrown down many wounded, Yes, all her slain are a mighty army. Her house is the way to Sheol, going down to the rooms of death. Mm -hmm.